Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Almighty God, to your hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and so worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to his people. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name, and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first lesson we hear today on this fourth Sunday of Easter is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Here ends the lesson. Our response to the first lesson this morning comes to us from the 23rd Psalm. Psalm 23 begins on page 612 of the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 23, page 612. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. For though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second lesson is a reading from the first letter of Peter. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are being beaten for doing wrong, what credit is there in that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, 
but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. Here ends the lesson. Listen now, the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but still they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. This Sunday, in the tradition of the Church, is called Good Shepherd Sunday because the Gospel, the Collect, and all of the readings focus to this fundamental idea that God is our shepherd and that we are the sheep of the flock of God. That's an ancient understanding and it goes way back in the history of God's people, back into the Old Testament. We hear how David, the great king, was himself a shepherd and was called in from the field in order to be examined before Samuel anointed him the new king of Israel. Later on, for example, we also hear in the words of the prophet Ezekiel all about how God is the great shepherd and Israel, the people of God, are his flock and how he cares for them and leads them. So this image that Jesus is using is not a foreign image to the people who would be listening to him. Instead, it would be something fairly familiar. And so it's a little odd that they didn't get what he was talking about. There is a key to that a little later, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But first, I'd like to turn our attention back to the response to the first lesson today, that psalm that is so well known by most of us, the 23rd Psalm. Many of us know it from memory, and probably the actual text that we are familiar with is from the King James Bible. And there, those words are so comforting. We often use this psalm in the context of our grieving for someone who has died. It's often recited or sung during a funeral service. It is so comforting. But if we see it only in that context, we miss something much bigger about it. I'm not saying it's not relevant. In fact, the very way we use it at a funeral service is probably just a small subset of the larger reality of which this psalm speaks. For the psalm talks about the sheep and the shepherd and how the Lord is my shepherd, the psalmist says. 
The shepherd is an important figure because the sheep themselves are very valuable. They are the source of clothing as their wool is shorn and then spun into thread and then into cloth and then into clothing to wear. They are the source of daily protein and the milk that they give and the cheese that we make from the milk. And ultimately, when their particular usefulness may be at an end, they are slaughtered and they are used to nourish us with the meat. And so you see, having sheep was a sign of wealth and it was a sign of security. And so it is that we are the sheep of God. All of those things apply to us too. For God gathers us together as a flock, as a church, as a community, as an assembly, because together we are much stronger. The value of each individual is multiplied many times over when we gather together as a community. Not only the simple sum of all the people there, but of all the great gifts that being in a group, in a community, elicit forth from us and how those gifts can be used to accomplish the work of God in the world. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me to lie down in green pastures. He gives me repose. Those comforting words show to us the importance of the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. Or if we know anything about sheep, they're not exactly the smartest animal in the animal kingdom. And in fact, if they're left to their own devices, they probably wouldn't survive very well at all. And so not only do they gather together in a flock, but they need someone to guide them. They need someone to protect them. They need someone to give them purpose in life. The Lord is my shepherd. The psalmist realizes that the person who does all those things for us and for the people of God is actually God. God is our shepherd. He does lead us out. It is God's voice that we listen to. It is God's voice that we always hope to hear, especially when we are troubled, especially when things are not going well, especially when we see that danger lurks. He sets a table before me in the sight of my enemies, of my foes. The psalmist understands this well because the sheep, really, when you think of it, are fairly defenseless as well. And so as they are out in the pasture and feeding, they are in the presence of enemies. The wolf, the fox, any predator could come along and steal the sheep and devour it. It is the shepherd that protects the sheep and so gives the sheep confidence that they may safely graze. The Lord is my shepherd. Those words come back again and again. And so it is not unusual again for Jesus to use this, this image to tell us about our relationship to God. I mentioned that the people that were listening to Jesus could not understand quite what he was talking about. And we get the answer to that just a few sentences later when Jesus, recognizing their inability to understand, simply repeats the image and he uses words that are used often in the Gospel of John as he introduces this image of the sheep gate. He says, I am the sheep gate. We've heard that before. I am the truth. I am the way. I am the life. I am the bread of life. I am. What we sometimes fail to realize is that in Hebrew, the word that is used to identify God is just that. For when Moses is on Sinai and speaking with God, he asks God specifically what he shall tell the people about the one who is calling him. What is his name? And God tells Moses, I am. 
So when Jesus uses this phrase, he is identifying himself, he is identifying his mission and his ministry with that of none other than God alone. I am the sheep gate. I am the one that allows sheep in and out of the protective enclosure in the farm. I am the one then that is also the shepherd and lead them out. They hear my voice and they listen to me. The Lord is my shepherd. Thy rod and thy staff, they give me comfort. There is a sign that the shepherd has that the sheep can recognize even apart from the shepherd's voice, and that's the staff that helps him protect them. It keeps them in a flock, to be sure. It's a tool that he uses to gather the sheep together to keep them uh, moving along as a unit. But it's also a weapon to be used against any predator that would threaten the sheep. And so it is that that gives us comfort. But we know if we are within the flock, if we are in the family of Christ, if we are in the people of God, it is God's staff and rod that protect us. Having that confidence, having that trust, having that utter reliance upon God is what Jesus is trying to teach us this day. This is especially important today for us. For we face, as others have said, an invisible enemy. The virus is no respecter of persons, or of color, or of class, or of education, or of social standing. And so it reminds us that there is nothing we have that can truly defend us except the knowledge and the wisdom and the courage that are themselves gifts from God. These are the gifts of the Spirit, and they are given to us to be used to protect the people of God, to protect, in fact, the people of the world, for we are all children of God. And so, my friends, as we recall this Good Shepherd Sunday, we are reminded that the Lord is our shepherd, and that it is God who protects us always and it is God on whom we must always rely, using the gifts, the strengths, and the talents that he gives us, but always realizing that they come ultimately from God. And that it is when we remain close to God and listen for his voice to show us the way that we ourselves will be saved. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. These are most comforting words. May, be, may they be your comfort this day and always. We are led by faith to believe that God is our shepherd and that he stands ready to defend us, to protect us, and to give us comfort. So now let us profess our faith in that one and same God by saying, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Shepherding God, in a dangerous world, let us hear your voice and come and go through your gate. We pray for the whole church, especially the Nippon Seikokai, that is the Anglican Church Communion in Japan, and their bishop, Nathaniel Makoto Uematsu, for the Prince of Peace Parish in Dallas, and the Diocesan Youth Council. We pray also for the Diocese of Kajo Keiji and their Bishop Emmanuel Murier and Emmanuel Parish Logili. That we all may be devoted to your word and to universal fellowship, being generous to all who have need. We pray now for the earth, for green pastures and still waters that we may restore them to the goodness and purity that they had at the time that you created them, O oh God. We pray for the people of the world, their nations and leaders, that your wisdom and peace may govern all so that no one will fear. We pray for all those in need, for those in want, those who are ill and those who are dying, we pray today especially for Marion, Fred, Stephen, Harry, Joan, Tom, June, Barbara, Zena, Catherine, Rosemary, and Clinton, and those who suffer with the coronavirus, that we may be the banquet that you set before them as we anoint them, feed them, and comfort them in your name. We pray too for ourselves, our families, and those we love, especially Randall, Bernice and Ryan, Joseph, Alyssa, Kelsey and Joseph, and Karen. May no one live in fear. May all dwell in your presence. So blessed are you, great shepherd, who through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit gives us goodness and mercy leads us down right paths, and restores our souls. Amen. And so, my friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. come of thee, O God, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself 
and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. Now on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer to you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. And sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joys of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Father Almighty, now and forever. Amen. And so now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we lift our voices to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! For now the gifts of God are given for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And he 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your minds and hearts ever in the knowledge and love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And may the full and abundant blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.